What's up guys, my name is Mike Golin and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to go over this problem called functions again. It's uh, code forces round 407, functions again. And pretty much this is, uh, you, we don't even have to read this first BS story, but pretty much there's this function called, uh, I don't know what it's called, what is it? Some fun mathematical function. Uh, F, okay, let's just call it F. Okay, there's a function F that takes two numbers, L and R, and what does it do? It sums up all the numbers from L up to R minus 1. And it takes the each uh, position each at each index of I, subtracts it by the, the one right next to it, and then multiplies, uh, multi uh, takes the absolute value of that, and then multiplies by negative 1 to I minus L. Okay, so pretty much our job is to calculate the maximum value of F among all possible values of L and R for the given array A. So what did I do first to try to solve this problem? Well, I tried first brute forcing. So what does that mean? That literally means try every single possible number, right, from one to N, pretty much in my array. So I looped from one to N, and then I calculated, I passed in each, each value of, uh, so I looped from one to N for, for L, pass in one to N, right? And then I loop from R, which I set equal to L plus one to the N as well. And then I pretty much just had a third for loop that calculated every single, uh, every this, this equation of F, every single value of F by passing in L and R in this equation over and over again. And I got TLE, I think I got, so I actually got, so I got TLE on the third case right here, I think. Wait, uh, let, let me see. Uh, well, I actually submitted so many times here, way more than what's showing here, but I think I got TLE over, so I got TLE over the third test case, the ninth, the ninth test case, yeah, ninth test case, I got TLE. So, how do you do this problem? Um, so what did I try first? First, I tried doing like, uh, I tried doing a, I tried writing out all the, the possible numbers of each of these problems of every single summation and then try finding a pattern and I found out this pattern that if you were to use a uh, there's something called dynamic programming right dynamic programming I found this if uh, this recurrence that occurred that if I were to store one number I would able I was able to get to to pretty much to instead of recalculating this equation over and over again I stored one of the last sums and then I was able to find something of that right instead of instead of calculating over and over again I just stored the previous value and I did that and I all still got TLE because there was two four loops there so I actually it took me a while but pretty much I had to look at the editorial okay so I'm gonna explain the editorial solution uh, they don't provide a code for this problem so it's actually uh, nice that you can't just copy and paste the code but pretty much I'll explain the editorial solution here in pen and paper. So I'm gonna explain it with you guys now. All right guys, so I redrew the, not redrew, I basically drew every single possible combination of passing in one um, L and R. So passing in one, two, then one, three, then one, four, one, five into L and R, and then two, three, two, four, two, five into L and R, and then three, four, and three, five. So here's the whole summation that I drew currently. Okay, so you see here from, f of 1, 2, you get this this uh, this equation, a of 1 minus a of 2, absolute value times negative 1 to the 0 power, right? And if you see it from f of 1, 3, you see the exact same equation here, and the only difference is that you're adding this, this value, plus a2 minus a3, absolute value times negative 1 to the 1. And after you're seeing this, if you see f of 1, 4, it's exactly the same as this here. So this, f, it's exactly the same as f of 1, 3, right? As you can see here, these two are exactly the same, except they add another term in the end as well for f of 1, 4. They add a to the 3 minus a to the 4 times absolute value times negative 1 squared. And f of 1, 5 is exactly the same thing, except they add this last term. So what they did was they took f of 1, 4, and put in here, and they add 
a of four minus a of five times negative one to the third. Okay, so you might be thinking, okay, so I could probably store some number of values so I don't have to recompute these uh, these equations every every single time, right? I could just store one of these. Okay, but now before we had jump to conclusions, let's let's go to f of two three. Okay, so wait, so in f of two three, right? It's a of two minus a of three absolute value times negative one to the zero. Okay, so if we see from here, this equation exact is exactly the same as f of one, uh, the last term of f of one three. Right. The only difference is that this there's an exponent here. There's a difference of exponent. Here, for f of one three, the last term was negative one to the one, and in f of two three, this term is the same thing except it's negative one to the zero. So I know that whenever I change the left, my left term, I'm gonna be changing the exponent, switching the exponent over and over again. And uh, if you see, and then the next in the next uh, f of two four, they put this. This is a this is uh, they put it this term is exactly the same here except they add the only difference is they add this last term and this last term we already know this this last term we saw in f of 1 4 over here a and 3 minus a of 4 times negative 1 and the only difference is this power is 2 and in f of 2 4 this power is 1 right but they still computed the absolute value of a of 3 minus a of 4 absolute value so Pretty much, if we if we think about this, the only thing differences between the numbers is that is the uh, the exponent, right? The terms are themselves. This term is exactly the same as this term. So these terms themselves are still the same. So the only difference is this exponent, as we could see here. These these exponents are the only difference in these terms. So I can technically what I could do is I could create two arrays that store these individual terms, every single term of these, right? Where I subtract a1 minus a2, uh, the, the next term from the first term, right? a, b, uh, absolute value. And I pretty much do the, all, the, all these terms for the, every single other term. And then I only change is the exponent, right? So I'm gonna alternate positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative for all the even values, right? Because we see here from when uh, f of one three, right? It goes uh, it goes positive then negative, right? And that's for so the first term is positive and the second term is negative for f of one three. So that means that I'm gonna start positive and negative. So he, uh, for one three and for the for the values of one two one three one four one five I'm gonna have an array that stores positive and negative and then if you see here it's also still positive and negative but um, let me let me see through two minus two zero yeah 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 so but in this one it changes because this term now is for f of two three right a of two minus a of three absolute value times negative one to the zero this term is the same thing as this term, right, of f of 1, 3, except this is now positive and this is now negative, right? So I could alternate the values, I have one array where it's positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative for every single terms where I calculate all the terms of these. Then I have the exact same array in the next array, and I calculate the same terms the exact same terms, but I'm going to neg alternate from negative to positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. And what does that tell me? Well, if I were to get the maximum sum of the positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, right? And then I find that maximum sum. And all I could do is just add that with the alternating of negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, right? If you think about it, because if there's only... Um, so most of these just like alternate positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And because there's only two ways of this could be doing, right? When you see from, if I'm moving from one to five, right? It, the terms are positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And then from two to two to the five, I didn't put two to five. I didn't go up to five. But if you go look at two to five, it's like negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. So if I have two arrays and then I just have, alternate the signs, then I find the maximum sum of the, 
the positive, negative, positive, negative. And then the second array, I find the maximum sum of the negative, positive, negative, positive. Then I find those two values. I could just add those two values up and then that will be my answer. So that's basically how to do this. So I'm gonna show you guys how an example of how you would do this with the same array that was given to us, okay? So I'm gonna get another sheet of paper. All right guys, so this is, basically I wrote an equation down to, for, that is exactly what, it, what we just said before. So when, uh, this is the index where I index from one to five, and this is the array four, one, four, two, three, one. So I'm gonna have maintain one array, which is when the, when L is odd, which is remember L is our starting point that I'm iterating from, right? So remember based on our previous example here, right? When our L was odd, it was positive, negative, positive, negative, right? When L was odd, it was positive, negative, positive, negative, right? Uh, it, we started at zero and then this was, yeah, this was the, that was the exponent. So I'm gonna start from when L is odd, I'm gonna do this equation where I'm gonna store an array that has, I'm gonna subtract the right from the left. And so I'm gonna do subtract four minus one and then two minus four and then three minus two and then one minus three, right? And I'm gonna alternate the signs. I'm gonna alternate when, this is gonna equation when negative one is to the ith power, right? So I'm gonna start with uh, po uh, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, or I think this is two, 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 one minus one zero, yeah. Okay, and then when uh, for C is my second array is when L is even, and I'm gonna store the exact same thing except I'm gonna do I plus one, so it's a different sign. So it's gonna be alternating signs for these two arrays, okay? so. I'm gonna store the array right now. This is B and this is gonna be C. So what is uh, B of I? B of I, so B of I at one is gonna be um, uh, four, uh, I plus one, which is four. A of four, uh, A of, so I plus one is gonna be four minus one. Absolute value is just three. Three times negative one to the first power, which is gonna be three times negative one to the first power is going to be negative three. Okay, um, I think I think so. How does he want us to do, 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 do? How, I think that's right. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, um, then the second one, I'm gonna do the same thing. Two minus four, uh, what's two minus four? Uh, this is gonna be negative two, absolute value is positive two. Then it's gonna be have positive exponent because two negative one to the second is positive, so that's gonna be two. Three, so for B of three, I'm gonna take the next term minus the first one, so three minus two, that's gonna be uh, negative one. Actually, positive one, wait, three minus two. Yeah, positive one, absolute value is one, then uh, to an odd power is gonna be negative, so that, yeah. Four, let's look at four. Five minus, or one minus three is gonna be negative two, absolute value is gonna be two. Two times negative one to the uh, fourth is going to be negative two, I think. Wait, let me see. Two times negative one, negative two, yeah, to the fourth power, which is positive, yeah. So one minus three, positive value two, absolute value is two. Two times uh, negative four, negative one to the fourth power, which is. Positive, yeah, it should, should be that. I think this is, I think it should be positive. Negative one to four, okay. Let's look at C now. Um, same thing, only difference is alternating. Yeah, so, do, 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 uh, let me see, four to negative two, positive two, two times, one to the fourth power is positive. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, same thing. So now we just have to find the maximum sum, maximum sum segment of each individual arrays. And you could do this with either two types of algorithms. You could use sliding window or you could use prefix sum, which is a dynamic program of prefix sum. So I'm gonna generate a prefix sum based on these individual arrays. So here, I'll use a prefix sum. <laughs> prefix sumify, yeah, prefix sumify. Okay, so prefix sum, uh, I'll show you guys, maybe I'll go in another video and pretty much explain how that works, but I'm basically just gonna add each uh, 
each term with the, the right hand term, okay? So, and I'm gonna store it at the index of the right side. So I'm gonna start negative three, three. The first term is the same, uh, and then I'm gonna add the second term to it. So it's gonna be negative one, and this is gonna be positive one. And then, then from negative one, I'm gonna add the uh, third term with it, which is negative two. And it's gonna be uh, one plus two and positive two. Then I'm gonna add the fourth term with it, which is gonna be uh, negative two plus, negative two plus two, which is zero. And this is gonna be two minus two is gonna be zero, yeah. Okay, so that's a prefix sum. And now I just need to find the maximum value of both of them. In this case, it's zero and then three. So it's gonna be zero plus three, which is E3. And that's the same answer as what we got, uh, what the output was. So yeah, now all we just have to do is code it up and I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. All right, guys, so I'm not going to recode it up again. Uh, so this is my solution of what I did. I'm just gonna explain line by line and I don't wanna type up everything again, over and over again. But here, so I'm gonna explain line by line. So I'm gonna read in the my uh, size of n, which is my size of my array that I'm gonna read in. I'm gonna create a vector of the array and it's gonna be n plus one. And the reason why I'm gonna do n plus one is because I'm gonna index from one, one to n, right? So uh, I don't wanna do zero indexing because zero indexing is kind of pain in the butt, especially with a problem like this. Like if if, if the given input statements are uh, one base, index one base, that's why I'm gonna index everything by one, okay? So I'm gonna loop through from one to less than or equal to n, right? And I'm gonna read in every single, uh, every single element in my vector array that I passed in uh, that to read in from starting with index one and then up to n, right? And we're able to do this because we start with their data at n plus one because we are indexing from n plus one. But anyway, that's what I did here. And then what I did was I'm going to create two arrays, B and C. B was the positive uh, when B is the is when L is odd and uh, C is when L is even, right? And then I create another two arrays, which is the prefix of B and then the prefix of C, okay? And they're all indexed for n plus one, so, so I'm indexing from index one, okay? So in this for loop, I'm gonna loop from one to n, and I'm just gonna calculate every single value of each value beside it, right? I'm gonna subtract the, the value, so I'm gonna subtract the value from the right side from the left side, minus the right value of the right side, right? From, so, okay, my bad. I'm gonna take the, the uh, value from my right next to my, right? Right, right next to my uh, index that I'm currently at, the position right next to me, I'm gonna subtract by that by my current position. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take uh, uh, data at i plus one and then subtract by, by my current position I'm at, right? And I'm gonna take the absolute value. Then I'm gonna multiply by power of negative one to i. And i is the the uh, what we're indexing from. We're starting from one to n, right? And that's basically the the value that we store every single time of a of i plus one minus a of i, right? And I do the same thing for C, except the difference is that I'm gonna do power of i plus one, i plus one. And uh, the reason why I'm doing i plus one here is to alternate the powers, right? So the, if the top part was positive, negative, positive, negative, I'm gonna alternate from negative, positive, negative, positive, okay? And if the top one was negative, positive, negative, positive, I'll alternate from positive, negative, positive, negative, okay? That's what I'm doing here, okay? Um, then I'm gonna need to create my prefix sum array. So I start with my prefix sum array to have the value of one. Uh, my bad, the first value is gonna be the same value as the, the b value, right? The first value of the b array. And then the second, so my, uh, my second array, prefix c, the first value is gonna have the same value of the uh, first value of the C array, okay? Then I'm going to create my prefix sum, and uh, yeah, th these two these two are just to find the maximum value, uh, maximum value of the array of my prefix sum. So I have B max, which is the maximum value that I'm gonna calculate. I start at zero in the beginning, just initialize it. And C max, I'm gonna start at equal zero, and that's going to be the maximum value of my C prefix C array, okay? Then I'm gonna create my prefix sum array. So I do for i equal two, uh, i is less than or equal to n, i plus plus, and I'm going to add every single value with the value right next to it, uh, with the previous value, with the previous value, my bad, okay. 
and uh, that's going to generate my prefix sum array. So then now I'm going to have every single like sum sums that was calculated previously. Then I'm going to take my max element of each one, b max and c max, and then after that I'm going to add both of them together. So what I got my max element of my prefix sum array and my max element of my c, the c max of the prefix c array right here, these two. And now once I have both of them, I'm going to C out and add them together. And I already got mine A seed, so yeah, that's my, this solution already got accepted. So yeah, that's basically how you do this problem. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later.